welcome to another day in our institute, the Virtual Institute for Capacity Building in Higher Education. Now we are in module three, theory, practice, and the future directions of academic planning in higher education. This lesson is about the future. After doing the theory, the practice, we are now going to look at the future of academic planning. So put on your binoculars or telescopes and uh, let's peep into the future of academic planning. Oh, yes, let's peep into the future. I am Peter Okebukola and today is a beautiful Monday, February 21st, 2022. You recall that in the last lesson, we defined unit cost and identify elements and did all of this regarding unit cost. Today, we shall be describing the current state of academic planning. If you want to look into the future, you've got to know where you're starting from, situation analysis. Then we'll look at the forces which will force us to change. And then we'll focus the future and look at the key elements of that future. I have two themes for this lesson. The first, as I said, is to look at the traditional directorate of academic planning and its challenges. And we now propose for the 21st century directorate of academic planning. I shall be looking at the following. What is change from the traditional necessary? What are the forces driving the change? What should be the schedule of duties of the 21st century directorate of academic planning in a new university? What higher education indicators, maybe also in the existing universities, what higher education indicators should the directorate be measuring? What organogram is best? How much will it take to run directorate for a year? That's talking about the budget. What challenges are envisaged for a directorate and how can the challenges be overcome? Now, let's move on to the current state of academic planning. And we're going to be looking at the objectives of the of, of academic planning it, it, as we have uh, them today, the structure, function, challenges, and efficiency. We're going to be drawing largely from the presentations by Sally Oshasson of Badamosi, Onde, Akimwande, and Odu. They're separate presentations that we had during the course. And of course, uh, I conducted a study in January just before this uh, uh, course, the module three took off of directors of academic planning and uh, I'm going to be spicing this with the findings. So what are the objectives of academic planning as of today? The objectives include to provide a framework for the coordination of academic activities, to ensure that we, do not have, we have streamlined development so as to avoid duplication of academic programs and resources. We want to match the objectives to match academic offerings of the institution with the needs of the learners and then develop resource allocation parameters and position the institution for sustainable success in the future. See about current state. What about structure? Professor Sally will give us this structure. We have the vice chancellor, as you can see, academic resource, academic planning. Is this structure still relevant for the future? That is what we're going to be looking at during the course of this uh, lesson. We're also given the functions of directive academic planning. Uh, you can see them on the screen for extracted from SALU 2022. By the way, the reference list will be SALU and the rest that I mentioned, their presentations at this, uh, this, uh, 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 this training program. Uh, Oshasan will give us the, the functions, which we call the responsibilities, as you can see on the screen. But I'm mostly uh, also gave us the functions as you can see on the screen. Now, you know, I conducted this study, as I said, of directors of academic planning in January of 2022. And look at it, 32 of them, 32 brilliant directors of academic planning. If your name is not on this list, it doesn't mean that you're not brilliant, but that these people, you know, rose to the challenge and presented this uh, to me. Kado University of Science and Technology, Abubakar Maitama, Yusu Potoro, in alphabetical order, which I cannot read all of them. You can see I'm giving them, <laughs> applauding them for giving us uh, their insights. So what did they say about the functions of director of academic planning? I started a bit from here. Uh, you can see uh, the main schedule of DAP, uh, of the, uh, as DAP, you can see there here on the screen. Uh, before I go on to this, this uh, before I go on to this, let me just scroll down and show you some of the other things that other this is the, if you can see, 12-page table from where I extracted the one I showed on the 
on that screen earlier screen you can see uh, these are the things quite a lot of what they're doing uh upper godwin alabi david uh Ali Ubelo, Odile, in alphabet Claudia. so these are uh, the what they, what they presented to us i, I, I show you that you're going to get the full dose of this in a in a compilation which i'm going to be sharing with you yeah so back to our main bit so this is the compilation report of a study on the world of the director of academic planning in nigeria university you're going to be getting this let's go on to the second theme we've done the traditional we've done the, the current now let's look at the proposals for the 21st century now why is change from the tradition why is it necessary is necessary because the world of higher education is changing and very fast change is the only permanent thing in life you know post pandemic delivery system has changed the jobs of the future have changed access issues have changed and you are the planners so you go to the change for traditional is necessary because of this change now population is growing demanding provisions of increase enrollment nigeria by 2050 we're going to have about 400 million people so planning are the same with many of african countries so this has to the the, the change that would to change for traditional because of the need to address population growth address the demand of population growth now financing or funding is not unlimited so there are limitations of financial resources which will demand new ways of delivering more, more with less. So go to, that's a force. I mean, that's uh, why it is necessary to change from traditional. And traditional ways of academic planning is not keeping pace with the rapid change. And data moving from analog to digital, you know, go from place to place, fill in the form and all that. If you notice that throughout this course, I've never asked that you fill a form or manually. So it has been digital, it has been electronic and online. So that's that's one change that is necessary away from the traditional. Now more variables are coming into the planning equation than before, uh, especially those that relate to relevance, quality, and effectiveness. Now, what are the forces demanding this change? Force of technology. New technologies are emerging. New policy demands. You know, nat at national level, at social level, policies are changing, and the academic planner should adjust to the new policies. The other force is new ways of delivering education. Now we have hybrid where you have conventional uh, that's face to face with the open and distance learning and all of that, which many universities are moving into. Demands new techniques of planning. Now curriculum is being reviewed and uh, you have been revised admission requirements, minimum academic standards, which the planner must factor into it. So that's a force. The other is the demand of the regulatory agency. The regulatory agencies are asking the DAPs, asking the universities to change, asking for new things, and the uh, the academic planning directory will have to respond to that. Now, requirements of global and regional development agenda. You have the SDGs, you have the Agenda 2063. These are bringing demands on academic planning in African universities. And indeed, the basis for some global ranking schemes, like, you know, the time side education impact rankings and the bar for better accountability. The public is saying, Oh, my friends, we're giving you so much money. In fact, not so much money, but they think it's a lot of money. And they are asking us to deliver better than we're doing, more value for money for the investment. So it demands that's a force. The better accountability demand is causing us to change the, our planning agenda. So, what future or which future? The future I'm looking at, we'll talk about 21st century. I'm not looking beyond 10 years. Yeah, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. 2022, because by 2032, 10 years from now, things will change. So my projections will relate to this time, time span. Now, what will be the major schedule of duties for the director of academic planning of this future that I'm talking about? Now, the one that is fading, that I will not want to see a director of academic planning undertaking is the schedules dealing with quality assurance and accreditation. This schedule is to be handled by Directorate of Quality Assurance, except if there's no Directorate of Quality Assurance in your university, which would be strange that you don't need to go into this area of uh, preparing a uh, self-study form, welcoming accreditors, so booking hotels for them, and all of that. No, that's the business of Director of Academy of Quality Assurance. It's not the business of Director of Academy Planning. Planning is planning. 
So, what are the ones that will persist, that will still go on? Now, these are the ones. I'm going to take a little while to read them. Implement policies and procedures relating to academic development, including development and review of academic brief and strategic plans for the institution. Acquire, manage, and disseminate data and information to both internal and approved external users. Maintain a data bank on student and staff statistics for use in planning, budgeting, and other management requirements. Participate in the review of academic programs of the university and evaluation of proposal for new academic program, uh, programs. Advise on the establishment of new additional units, programs, faculties, and colleges. Process proposals for, for new programs, faculty and college uh, to NUC. Ten more. Determination, actually I have 14 of them. Determination of the carrying capacity of programs of the university. Prepare and publish statistical digest of the university and if requested, submit same to NUC. Coordinate academic activities such as courses, allocation, lectures and examination, timetable, develop resource allocation parameters, Monitor resource allocation and utilization in line with the plans of the university. Advice on human resource needs and on issues relating to staff development. Liaise with NUC for implementation of appropriate policies for the management of the university and guide the university in the implementation of government directives and policies. This one, in my view, will still present. We're carrying them over from the current uh, uh, practice. Now, what are the new ones? The ones that I imagine is that the future in the 10 years that are my band, the 10-year band, I will imagine that the director of academic plan, directorate of academic planning will undertake forecasting and scenario building, which we are not doing now, which we must do, to predict trends for guiding management decisions. Establish and manage institutional educational management information system. EMIS or EMIS, any way you want to pronounce it. Develop and deploy an electronic dashboard for real time presentation of data and situation analysis. Conduct and publish periodic ranking of academic units in the university in line with national and global indicators. These are the four that I see that will emerge and should be added to what we are doing at the moment. Now, what are the indicators that uh, future DAPs should pay attention? Should pay attention to gross enrollment ratio, higher education initial participation rate, student survival rate, dropout rate, national spread of students in enrollment, in enrollment efficiency, percentage of principal officers, deans, and HODs, not from the catchment area of the university. We are turning our universities into village schools. Gender parity index, public expenditure on university education as percentage of national expenditure, performance on the 17 SDGs. There are several indicators clustered in here. Performance on the indicators of webometrics ranking. Performance on the indicators of AD scientific and clarivate rankings. Performance on the 12 indicators in the 2021 ranking of Nigerian universities. Of course, the indicators may, may, may increase in number or maybe decrease, but this is what we have at the moment. So what organogram can help us do this? The organogram that I'm proposing, which will fit in, with the new role of the or the proposed role of the directorate of academic planning. So, okay, I have the, the DAP reporting that I used to revise since now. I have a resource planning, resource planning unit or section, academic bit of it. The education management information system, there must be a unit, a solid unit there or section, which will handle data bank, modeling and scenario building as subunits and the dashboard development. And then you have ICT. There must be an ICT component, ICT section here. Publication section and research section, which will be, uh, which will be dealing with ranking and other issues. So I've uh, tried to overlay the functions uh, of the imagined of the new DAP for the future with this organogram. What about the budget? How, how will the budget run for a year? I'll, I'll try to provide the budget 2022-2023. Uh, you have a director, deputy director, chief academic planning officer, two senior academic planning officers, three academic planning officers, one or two, one stroke two, two technical officers. Now, these are the costs, actually, actually the real cost for the year coming to this. You need to buy 12 number laptops. You can see it's more, this number is more than this because you're going to have some for training, some, uh, some 
additional for trading. 12 number desktop computers, uh, 3 number photocopiers, 3 number printers, 1 number 12 seater bus, 1 number Toyota Camry, and you need to buy some generators. And this is coming to 69 million. And then the overhead, internet service, electricity, hey, this is a lot. Travels and DTA, software and technical services, printing, Zoom cost. So that brings the total uh, expenditure here to 109 million. And then you build some income, do some trading, and earn some little money. So the, the, the balance that you have is this 108 for the year. That's the budget that I'm proposing. What are the challenges? So challenges uh, looming, will loom. Capacity deficit. Now, to be able to cope with ICT driven academic planning, there's deficit. Inertia to change by the old brigades. They, you know, uh, this is getting too much for us. So why should we change and uh, get into retirement? But they don't know that the future is still great for, for you, whether you are close to retirement or far from it. And you got to change. Difficulties in handshaking of Isuya EMIs. You know, when you, when you develop your EMIs, uh, you need to let it handshake with the national or with the NUC, uh, the uh, NUC EMIS. Uh, spin off from technological limitation and interplay of territoriality. How do we overcome the challenges? Uh, go to train our staff and continue to train them. That will be continuous training, continuous professional courses. Uh, engage more technology loving staff. When you, somebody is going to come to the DAP, the directorate, uh, that person has to be fairly well fluent in technology. I have to develop an institutional EMIS based on a template from the uh, national. So what I will learn in this lesson, we, we, we've uh, described the current state of academic planning. We have identified the forces demanding the change, and we have forecast the future, and we have described key elements of that future. I will prepare a draft budget and we have anticipated uh, some challenges. So that will be the end of uh, the lesson which we're going to present at uh, a gather, uh, which we're going to present live uh, later in the day. And if there are matters coming out from there, and we will uh, present this as an epilogue. So thank you very much and see you next class. The regulating body will set a standard in the choice of director of academic planning in future thank you sir thank you so very much that's uh, brilliant uh yes uh, i'm sure that uh, will happen uh you know we are going to be developing a manual and be coming out with uh, the specifications in there which nuc will uh, finally adopt you know that will surely happen thank you professor Aditola. god bless you sir professor lawa yekini olawa ye you have the floor sir I'm from Alfa Babalola University, Adwekiti. Of course, of course, that's a uni. Wonderful, oh, yes. Uni. Now, in Alfa Babalola University, we have well-established directorate of academic planning, directorate of ICT, and directorate of quality assurance. Oh. With the future where the academic planning is going, are we not going to start having problem with the directorate of ICT? Because currently, we collaborate at every discussion. So it's a lot of worry, thinking that ICT may think that they'll be threatened. What's your comment, sir? Yeah, comment is very straightforward, sir. Uh, the ICT unit in, in academic planning is not the ICT for the university. You know, in a provision for two tech officers, it's just one technical officer and some assistant that will be the heart of or the hub of your ICT activities within that directorate. So the that that unit will be your liaison with the university uh, ICT uh, department. You will see when you now come to setting up the electronic dashboard that that is necessary. Let, let, let me tell you something that happened. I already prepared this uh, uh, lesson, and uh, I then said, uh, Bamiro, uh, Gina Bamiro, come, let us record your, your lesson. And it came out very strongly that you need an ICT person, a director of academic planning, 
it was after that that I included this. So if it's going to bring some rough edges uh, in your university, then don't bother about it. You can take it off. This is just a generic organogram. So customize it as well as you want. Unfortunately, we'll not be able to take more than these two people, uh, Professor Suji and Professor Philippe. Uh, so let's get on with it. Uh, Professor Philippe, please take the floor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Prof, um, I want to thank you for this uh, lecture we have enjoyed today. Uh, my worry, uh, I want to take from what Professor Adetola mentioned earlier now. The academic planning seems to occupy a very central position in the university system now as it is. The future, I was thinking that uh, we should think about maybe making it a career, just like a library, where we have librarian and growing up in the system. The idea where we have professors coming in two years and three years and they have changed, another person come in, we cannot sustain, we cannot sustain that office and keep it running the way it should. That's my, that's my point of view. Oh, very good. Good point. And I'd like to congratulate you because I've been monitoring your scores, <laughs> monitoring your scores in the program, and you've been scoring well, very well. Uh, so your point is valid. As I mentioned to Professor Lawa, we are, going to, we are developing a manual. A 25-minute lecture will not cover it all. So that manual will be comprehensive, and it will have all the major elements that we all need to factor in to the future of uh, of academic planning. Yes, uh, thank you, sir. Professor Gregory Osuji, that's the last we'll take. Yes. Thank you very much, Prof. We have been so inspired. Thank you, sir. By your, by your approach. Uh, please, um, looking at the- uh, Can you GDP, tell us your university affiliation? Godfrey Cray University. Very good. That's a great university, yes. Yeah, looking at the DAP, who is uh, a visionary, no, do we need to change him or her because of tenure? Someone who is doing well and who is a vision, who is visionary oriented. Yeah, so uh, you can keep her or him forever uh, if you want, but you know, no condition is permanent in life. Uh, the moment you say somebody is indispensable, I'm not too sure that our creator God will like that. Yeah, society is dynamic. You never can tell whether the next person who's going to come will be as uh, will not even be better than the person. But that's uh, an external affair which I cannot delve into. So I leave it to your university or any other university that want to keep the GAP, you know, uh, for. But in the manual, we are going to be making some suggestions about making a career path, just like Philip uh, Bombegna said, and some others. So we'll be making some suggestions. I will come back to you uh, to approve of that manual. So that's it. We have four more minutes to end this session. And uh, I would like to uh, yield to our chairperson, Professor uh, Cheme, to... End of today's event. I'd like to appreciate you all for your rapt attention and contributions to today's discussion. This marks the end of all conceptual tracks for module three. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the day. Bye bye.